we're here for the LUS Fiber Smart City Challenge held here in Lafayette because of the Festival International, a huge cultural event. We've matched in technology associated with that. LUS is the electric water and sewer provider for the city of Lafayette. LUS Fiber is our telecommunications arm, one of the few in the country that have where a city has built its own uh, fiber to the home telecommunications system, offering up to 10 gig per, per second of, of internet to, to homes. And so what we're trying to do is to also look at what other things we can do to leverage the fiber to the benefit of the community on the long term. Uh, so the Smart City Challenge is all about bringing people from not only locally but other places to compete for prizes, financial prizes, uh, to be able to do something that can help our city as a whole with technology and without technology. She's looking to hold what, what, all, what are the things we can bring to the table that can make a difference in what our city can do. And transportation was keyed in as one of the things that's really important. Many cities have that same problem. You know, they, they've got a lot of cars moving. They don't have very much highways. It costs a lot to build the highways, etc. So the idea is to have these people look at the, at the assets that we have in this community and look for ways that we can make transportation work better for our community as a whole. We've assembled an incredible group of talented folks uh, that have formed teams and they're going to come help us figure out how to solve our traffic problems. Lafayette, we're really blessed. We had uh, Terry Huval and a lot of smart folks uh, laid a fiber network a long time ago, which gives us capacity that not many cities in the world have. And so we're trying to capitalize on that and be smart about how we make decisions. And so one of ours is, is traffic, and, and this is an example of, of utilizing the the, the talent that, that exists from around the uh, country to come here and, and kind of help us figure out solutions. So our mission really is to, in, uh, is to empower cities to engage with people. And uh, so cities is a big part of what we do. We play a big role in, uh, or it's a big part of our business is to help cities better connect with their citizens, um, to engage with citizens on a different level. Um, again, using technology and to modernize systems and to modernize the engagement that they have uh, with the citizens in the cities. I mean, Lafayette is a great city. I mean, we, we've had a great time since we've got here and met lots of people. And I, I'm, I'm really impressed with the way that Lafayette, the vision that Lafayette has around where they want to go. Uh, I'm really impressed and, and uh, um, inspired by the, the way that um, uh, Joel, the mayor, has, has put together his vision for where he wants to go. Um, and really interested, interested to see how his change in approach um, is going to change things for the citizens here in Lafayette. Anytime we can get really smart people thinking about the future of our city, as a planning director, I am super excited about that. So I was invited here today in part as a subject matter expert in the transportation space. I'm the planning director for Lafayette Consolidated Government. So just getting to talk through questions and answers with some of these folks is, is really exciting. One of the things that a city needs to do is to make it possible for its people to move around. Um, and, you know, whether that's by car or by bus, walking, biking, whatever mode people choose, the city needs to concern itself with the most efficient uh, transportation network possible. Lafayette is growing into a smart city. Ten years ago, LUS Fiber built a fiber infrastructure to provide high-speed bandwidth across the city to every citizen within the city. Um, this has provided cit the citizens of Lafayette with a better quality of life. It's provided the Lafayette with economic development and growth um, in the tech community. And who knows what's to come. LUS Fiber was a vision that we had to be able to build our own telecommunication system in the city of Lafayette. Because we had our own electric utility system, we needed fiber connectivity anyway to be able to operate the system. And so what we did was take it back off of the utility system, fiber system, and built something for the entire city. It took a public vote in 2005, which was a 62% vote in favor of it, it took a number of lawsuits that were uh, placed upon us by the competitors, by the large telecom companies that did not want us to get into this business. Then it took the faith of the people of the community to say we really want this and they did. In 2009 we began serving our first customers and as of today we're probably about got 45 percent of the market 
we're making a, a substantial profit allowing us to start expanding outside the city of Lafayette and the, the beauty of the system here is that it's owned by the people of the city of Lafayette so the directions that we're taking is based on what the people want to see not just based on what the corporate America wants to see and as a result we have gotten a strong allegiance from our from our community we're the only city in the state of Louisiana to do this and probably one only probably one of maybe 20 cities in the country to do this. Uh, so it is a very entrepreneurial, courageous thing that our, our elected officials uh, were, were willing to go forward with and it's something that our city is very proud of. What are the challenges in trying to solve municipal issues such as traffic? Understanding where people want to want to go, um, how to how to work around the existing infrastructure that's that's here and, and take advantage of opportunities to you know make improvements some some subtle, some very large, and uh, and kind of unite those things and learn from the data and help you know collect ideas, uh, metrics, and it's a it's, you know cities are very moving you know moving body. So there's there's things that don't move the streets, the buildings. So you have to innovate around them. So there's some, you know some challenges in that, and that's the fun of you know being able to come in and. And, and help a city look at how to take advantage of um, you know smart technologies and and the, the 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 playing with all of this data. Bonjour tout le monde. That's a good way to wake up people who've been awake for 24 hours. <laughs> it's like an alarm clock. My name is Terry Huval, I'm with LUS Fiber, and we're so, so proud to be part of the Smart City Initiative, uh, the, the, uh, the whole challenge and the whole concept of do doing things with the technology that we have here in Lafayette today and, and, and bringing it to the, a different level for the future. Our community, the people of this community voted to establish this system. And so it's theirs. And we wanted to make sure we do all the things that we can to make it the best investment they could have ever have hoped to make. Um, we chose the Festival International because, uh, to be a, a sponsor, because, you know, it's a, it's a fun festival. It brings a lot of culture here. And, and the idea of our belief in culture, as you can tell with the, with the musical on, uh, rendition here, and the technology just makes for a perfect match. And we want to try to make sure that we're doing the things necessary to keep the uniqueness of our, who we are uh, up at the same speed as moving forward with where the technology is. So for the last 24 hours, some competitors have, um, have are looking at a chance to win $10,000 and uh, prizes up to $20,000 over the next, over the coming months. And so the one I introduce our presenting sponsor who's involved in all of this uh, and uh, with the CEO of Adoxio, Mr. Grant McLaurin. Come on, Grant. I, I just wanted to be really quick here. And I, I have to say, first off, um, Mayor and President, and, and I want to thank you so much for having us here. Um, I, I have to tell you the the hospitality that we have experienced over the last couple of days and the charm and the the just the world class um, welcome we've received here is, is, is like I'm ne second to none. I mean, this is a really, really special place, and the very obvious pride that you all have. I'm even starting to say you all. Um, <laughs> I speak Canadian, by the way, if you didn't know, so um, we can translate later. But you no, know, the, the the immense pride you all have in in, your, in where you live in your home here is uh, uh, really remarkable. Uh, it, it was really heartwarming to have been around here for the last couple of days and to have met so many fabulous people and uh, great time to be here at a festival. Hey, do you want to go to Lafayette? Apparently there's this really great music festival and there's great food and we're going to do a contest. So we were, we were really excited. So when I think Kayla came up with the idea for this, uh, you know, we were really excited to be, take part in this because, um, you know, it was, I had the opportunity to be on the, the mayor's radio show yesterday and we talked about it. Local governments are the closest to people. Um, it is really the opportunity, and, and as the world we urbanize and people are moving into cities, and I love that we picked a challenge around transportation because um, the world is moving out of the rural areas and moving into cities. So cities are experiencing this 
rapid growth. And they need, you know, these systems are busting out. Um, they really need, uh, you know, so it's especially around transportation, energy, those kinds of things are, are going to be uh, where the future solutions are needed in order for cities to be sustainable. Um, so this idea of, of creating smart cities is so important and transportation is a pillar of that. So we're really honored to be here, more than honored to be here. I, I can't say it enough and uh, excited to present this. We're really excited about what you guys are going to, you guys have been working on. We're really excited to see that and uh, uh, I'm going to wish you all the best of luck. I, maybe you have a little nerves. Uh, I hope you have a little nerves because I'm going to channel my inner Simon Cowell out here. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm just really looking forward to everything and, and uh, just come up here and be great everybody thank you so much for allowing us to be here once again thanks each team is going to have four minutes to present their idea and at two minutes they're going to get a warning at one minute they're going to get a warning at 30 seconds they're going to get a warning and then when it comes to this after they come to a pause we're going to we're going to applaud so we're going to get this uh, rolling pretty quickly our judges are going to have five minutes of Q&A <laughs> Uh, and so um, we're excited to, to get started. Um, at the end, we're going to deliberate. We'll go and talk about all the teams. We're gonna, uh, we, they've got a rubric. They've got a bunch of questions they're going to uh, ask. And then we're going to deliberate and then pick the winner. But all of y'all are winners. Can we, can we get an amen to that? Yeah. 360 Fuel, come on up, and we're going to plug you in. There you go. I'm Orlin Prospery from 360 Fuel. We're actually a company here that houses most of its development here in Lafayette. We are an IoT fuel company. We have a number of disruptive technologies coming to the fueling experience soon. But I'd like to get started and, uh, and go. So as we explored the problems of, of the parish in regards to transportation and not only just moving vehicles but moving people, I think again and again we wanted to solve it with with one solution and and the reality is there's no silver bullet that provides the infrastructure needed to move people across the parish uh, as needed unless you spend tons of money on on development to have uh, a, a very very robust infrastructure so how can we solve this problem or problems rather uh, too many cars underutilized options and untapped infrastructure Currently, Lafayette has a great infrastructure with LUS fiber to every uh, traffic light and the, the cameras that are throughout the city. Uh, lack of incentive. What do you do to incentivize people to uh, use other modes of transportation? So we developed a platform. Our platform incorporates uh, traffic vision, which is a, uh, a uh, it includes computer vision as well as radio frequency technology uh, APIs. Uh, that are open to the public, and I'll get more into that in a second. A mobile app, a traffic module that goes on every, uh, every traffic light, as well as bike sharing, smart buses, and carpooling. Utilizing exif existing infrastructure, as well as adding a little, but not much. The budget for our project is $1.4 million. So our traffic solution, so we actually were able to utilize the, uh, the cameras that are throughout the city to actually count cars uh, at various times of day. Um, we use computer vision for that. Our traffic solution includes adaptive control, traffic diversion, car counting, emergency notification, and a real-time API. Uh, the API can be utilized with apps like Lyft, uh, Waze, as well as Uber, and open to uh, Apple Maps as well as Google Maps as well. So let's talk about the economy of miles. Well, what is that? Well, uh, we need a way to incentivize consumers to use our app as well as to plug in to Go. Um, so Go incentivizes the use of Go bikes, Go buses, carpooling, and Go users, uh, and rewarding them to uh, walk to certain destinations or use other modes of transportation. They earn miles. They also get the ability to spend it, like maybe free parking or uh, at healthy destinations, like if you walk today, now you get $2 off a smoothie, right? Ways to incentivize and also drive local economy. So our mobile app that we developed incorporates the abilities to, to carpool, to bus, to walk, to park and bike, uh, as well as infrastructure needed. Uh, the only thing really needed is to add uh, smart parking throughout the city, as well as uh, bikes that can be utilized. Uh, so on the app itself, you can actually look and see the bikes that are around the city. We'll incentivize using artificial intelligence, saying, hi, it's sunny today, come out and bike, right? And give them incentive to do that. The miles that you see 
are, uh, they actually can accrue that and use it to, uh, they can save money, travel healthier, as well as, again, use it elsewhere uh, to spend. So our solution is Go, and we're moving Lafayette forward. I'd like to open up for questions. Thank you all for having us. Well, we're thrilled to be here in Lafayette, so thank you all for the great hospitality that we just felt the same way. Uh, we know that Lafayette has done an awful lot of great, a great deal of planning and strategic planning for its future. We're excited to be here focusing on transportation because you actually already recognize some of the work that we've done in helping our client in Denver Regional Transport uh, District achieve the TSA's highest security standard, the gold standard for, for security. We've also helped Tampa um, by looking at their data and helping them look into the decision-making trees that they have. They, they, they actually chose to not do a commuter rail program because the ROI just wasn't there. Based on these experiences, we really think we can help the city of Lafayette. One of the things you've told us that you are interested in is telecommuting. We believe that Lafayette is uniquely positioned to incentivize telecommuting because your broadband internet is municipally owned. So you can determine how much it costs the city in congestion, offer a fraction of that as an incentive to employers and to employees to work from home. And then of course these same people will require modern workplace tools which we will also be delighted to help with. Okay? You have some great data feeds, okay? and I know you've already begun to build your data warehouse. We can absolutely enhance your cloud data warehousing, cybersecurity, and insights. And I've got an example here I'd like to show you. So here we have traffic Twitter. It's updated on an ad hoc basis. It tells us when congestion is happening and where. On the other hand, we have traffic 911. It's updated every 15 seconds. It tells us incidents that might impact traffic. At present, there is no cross-analysis of these. There's actually no communication with your transit system between these. As a data scientist, I would love to be able to help you figure out what is systematic congestion and what is event-based congestion. You've told us that you want to partner with the university and that you want a bus tracking app. Now, we can spend a million and a half dollars building you an app from scratch. We'd be delighted to do that. We can, but why? There are already world-class apps out there to track buses. Cubic does Boston's. They do many other cities as well. We'd be happy to help you bid that out. We don't need your money for that. Uh, Intrix has the largest, largest parking availability app there is. Why clog up traffic with people circling around looking for parking? You already have smart meters. You're about to add garage spaces that are smart. That was already part of your plan. Point your API at PARKME. You're done. But if you want to partner with the university, which is one of your stated goals, they already have a bus tracking app too. And you could probably learn from each other and incentivize students to ride. You care about the safety of the buses and the perception. You could give the drivers a panic button because you already now know where those buses are. If somebody's got a gun in their face, they can stomp on the button. They don't have to get on the radio to call for help like they do now. You could put random plainclothes marshals on your buses Publicity would be great. You could get the deterrent value for a minimal cost because no one really knows whether the marshals are on there. Emergency call buses at any powered bus stop and a police substation at the Rosa Parks. We went there, we looked at all your data, we interviewed staff. Uh, you have a great uniform police presence, but it's in the hot spot for crime, so the surrounding area could benefit from a police presence as well. So there you have it. We believe your opportunities are telecommuting, modern workplace solutions, data aggregation and insights, leveraging world-class apps that already exist, and safety initiatives. Merci beaucoup. Merci. I just want to say thank you for allowing us to be here. It's an honor. I want to introduce our alternative transit incentive platform. Okay, so we have a goal. Our, our team has a vested interest in assisting the development of a safe, efficient, and cost-effective means of city transport, and here's a platform that can assist in that. It is called Along. 
excuse my French, but that is, that means let's go. And here's the picture of the mobile app, and here are the goals of this app. Incentivize public transportation, uh, engage people in local businesses, get people to the stores and, and give to the economy, but importantly, provide a data analysis platform for LCG. Okay, so we have these uh, alternative transportation methods, and I can gain points with the app just by riding a bus, carpooling, or biking. And on the other side, LCG is gaining insights in this activity. We get bus density, we get high occupancy vehicle traffic, uh, where are carpools going, where are they mostly used, and then we have bike traffic, which could be used for where can we put a new bike path. Okay, so we have the user engagement with the local economy. So this is what happens when I open the app. I'm able to scroll through and see promotions put forth by uh, local businesses. I'm gaining points as I'm traveling. On the bottom, you see my points balance. And the Lafayette Science Museum has an offer, a 50% off, and I'm interested. So I'm going to go spend my points there. So that's where the business can come through the app and the business portal and get promotion and bring people to their uh, businesses or city events. And how does it work? We use beacons. That's right here. Um, we provide beacons to public buses. This is a Bluetooth technology. Uh, it's inexpensive and it's used by insurance companies across America right now. And the best part, you don't have to take out your phone when you get on the bus. You don't have to act with the app. It can collect it. Okay, so this is the gain for LCG, the data. So if I, let's, let's take my user story. I'm going to ride my bike and I wanna gain those points because I want bonuses and I want discounts around the city. So I ride my bike and I get on the bus. And notice the red area, that's where we hit a maximum occupancy on that bus. It was a little crowded. So this is a great example how LCG can see the data and use it to make plans. Maybe we need a new bus stop a new bus route, we need to make a plan. So let's look at the use cases. Uh, you've already, I've already talked about the Lafayette Citizen use case, and I'm excited. I'm excited to start gaining these points because I want these bonuses and I want to interact with my economy. Um, businesses are excited because this is promotion in a competitive market and they can pull more people in. And LCG, I hope, is excited because they have a new platform for city planning and data collection. And this is our process flow. And the only thing I want to point out here uh, is CGI has a great relationship with STEM camps and STEM opportunities. So it would be a great collaboration to teach a high school how to build these uh, Internet of Things devices. We're training a school, and we are doing a cost-effective way to collect these. Um, so in conclusion, we want to provide a data platform for LCG, collecting data from these beacons as you're carpooling, as you're getting on the bus. Uh, we want real incentives, saving real money. Uh, carpoolers are saving from just the gas, but they're also getting bonuses around the city or discounts. And we want to put that money back into the businesses. And then this leads to lower traffic congestion because we have carpoolers, we have more people excited to ride the bus, excited to ride their bikes. So it's overall a great platform. And that's it. So we're open for questions. All right. I'm Brian Krzyzewski. I'm with the Microsoft Practice within IBM. And my team here is local talent from Louisiana. Uh, thank you once again, LUS Fiverr, for sponsoring this. And I love what I've already seen from the participants uh, in this group. We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, the theme for our program today was if we were going out to the community, you know, how would we say? We'd say, help us help you with our customer engagement solution. And so really what we focused on, it was a large road that we could have walked through, and we decided to, to pick up a few things. And so leveraging whatever existing LCG assets you may have, or even some sort of future roadmap that you may have, as others have mentioned earlier, there's a lot of wonderful programs and apps that are out there. And so trying to be cost conscious and taking advantage of existing projects that are already in the works, we decided to look at a few things here. And so basically it's creating the synergy within the different apps and APIs, um, different programs, maybe even some of the things that we've seen already earlier today that could be added to a solution like this. And so the goal here at the end is provide an excellent digital customer journey that provides better data for better city planning. 
And so based on our QA yesterday, we came up with a couple of stories, some things that we wanted to put together. So we have here Sharon, she's a visitor, festival goer, coming from out of town, wants to get involved, wants to use something. So we kind of created, if I don't lose it, uh, an app that I'd like to demo in just a second here, and it's basically this Lucy 311, L-U-S-Y, and the Y stands for you, by the way. So L-U-S-Y, Lucy 311. There's a portal that we had to create to just kind of create the leveraged asset base that we can use, but we're looking for public or private transportation bike share LUS open space parking meters. You've actually heard some of these ideas today from the Q&A, I think they're wonderful. And if there's APIs that are there, we would have loved to have the keys last night. We would have tried to dynamically add that to our POC. <laughs> but nonetheless, so here's Sharon and here's one of our stories. Another story that we have is we have Charles. He's a citizen business commuter. Once again for him, check traffic conditions before his commute. Uh, reserve a pay for parking spaces. It's something that we talked about with the parking meters. Things that you can plan ahead by reserving. Uh, also leveraging the site. Once again, we'll go to the next, next thing. We have customer enablement personas. We have Louise, she's a citizen senior transportation. Obviously needing to get around town, she needs some assistance. That may help out with the flow, we have two minutes. And then Becky, of course, she's a student. She wants to use the uh, travel, uh, the bike share. So we have process, efficiency, productivity, consumption. These are the areas that we think that we can help the city in benefiting using a solution similar to this. And as we move down here, the benefits of the city of Lafayette is you really get that 360 degree view of using all the infrastructure and assets that you have in place. And so if that's what we got as of right now, hopefully I can get the rest of this to work. We'd like to use the, um, I'd like to use, he's gonna count me down here, our little travel app here that we've created. Follow. There we go, hi. All right, so we're engaging a Watson conversation here, and hopefully Watson's talking to us, and we used an API from Twilio, which is an SMS text message. Uh, let's see here, what do I wanna do? I wanna put uh, travel. So based on this, I can help you with travel. What is your destination? I wanna say 100 Cameron. I think that's a street here. <laughs> well, it may, it may t Watson may know that, right? So it says, oh, okay, you want to go to this address? What time? We're going to say 5 p.m. All right. Uh-oh, maybe I didn't do it right. I think I needed to put a space there. Let's see here. 5 p.m., would you rather drive or public? I'm going to say public transportation. I want to take advantage of the public transportation. We have 30 seconds, public transportation. Let's see, would you rather, da, 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 da. come on, give me one more thing here. We've only got 30 seconds. I want to use the bus. All right, bus, awesome. Now, once again, here's a dynamic API we would have loved to click into, because right then and there, we could have gone to your already existing bus routes and start to plan those things. This is just an example, easy, simple POC. We just really wanted to put something together. You kind of show you the art of the possibility, what could be out there already, whether it's existing infrastructure or something on your roadmap, we would definitely like to work with you and any of the other participants. Thank you. Let's hear from Team Lab. Good afternoon. My name is Shane East. Um, we're, we were Team OM, but we have a, a bunch of people here that aren't in the Opportunity Machine. Uh, so we just became uh, Team Lafayette Moves, and it's kind of an ad hoc group from a lot of different uh, areas. But we're all from here. We're all from Lafayette and are super familiar with the problems. Um, we saw this as uh, it's uh, there are a lot of high-tech solutions obviously being presented today, but there are really uh, a lot of low-tech problems that we're facing. Uh, can can you all hear me in the back? Talk up louder. Okay, cool. So we're looking at it as we want to create a community connection movement. We see it as a marketing play. Honestly, we have a really good infrastructure when it comes to city buses here, and uh, we have rideshare programs. And we have some starts. Uh, there, there's been a, quite a bit of investment lately in the bike routes and to making uh, neighborhoods more walkable, especially towards downtown. We already have a pretty solid 20-year downtown uh, uh, plan to enrich the downtown environment and um, make people move there and, and make it more walkable. So we're basically we're looking at, at marketing what's already there and getting people to uh, change the perception of it and to start using what's, what's already available. So we've started the hashtag Better Routes. Um, for this uh, event, it'll be Better Routes Johnston. We had a, we've had a Better Block event, which I'm sure anybody from here is familiar with. We've had several Better Block, uh, Bertrand, Better Block, Congress, and they've been super successful. Uh, I was, uh, we, we went to a couple of the events when they were put on. It's a one-day event where they 
uh, kind of decorate the street like they think it should look and by adding plants and repainting uh, walking routes and biking routes. And it's been super successful. It's a one day marketing plan. Everybody goes out there, they get to see it and they move forward. So we're looking at tying to that better, uh, better block marketing campaign and using better routes. So for us, the focus is on the Seattle model. We looked up, they're the only city in, in almost the entire United States that has actually increased ridership on their public transportation, uh, buses in particular. Um, so we want to educate and inform the public. We want to uh, do a better route by simulating the ideal bus experience here locally, and we have a couple of different ways to do that. <clears throat> so for educating and informing, um, we're looking at uh, basically focusing on car alternatives, uh, but for this project in particular, buses and uh, just informing everybody that it's gonna be, uh, prior to the 30-day trial, kind of what we're gonna be doing. And we're gonna be focusing on just a small window to try it out, get everybody educated on the system, and then move forward. So the call to action will be uh, using the hashtags, putting them out there, and we've already uh, put some hashtags out there on the LUS site, just to let you know, start using it. Uh, uh, conductor call is another tool for really uh, getting people to use public transportation. So we like to drink here, uh, obviously, anybody that's from here. Um, and uh, we advertise with local businesses, uh, local bars along the routes to do a, a, essentially a pub crawl uh, on certain nights to kind of as one more marketing tool. Um, downtown Alive, hashtag Downtown Alive is an event we have every Friday, another item that we can tie into and, and increase it. But we have, a, we have a huge population of people that are uh, below 30 here that could potentially be, are interested in public transportation, maybe uh, don't perceive it like it really is. And, we think we could, by a really strong marketing campaign, kind of increase that, uh, uh, that ridership. So part of the problem is the buses aren't that great. Uh, the bus routes aren't that great here. We don't have enough buses. So we're looking at adding temporary bus stop tents. They're like $30 a piece, or we could put them out there and, and uh, uh, protect from the heat and rain. Um, maybe lease a, more, a couple more buses for that 30 days to show uh, what an increased, uh, more of a transit uh, increased uh, availability would look like. Add bus stops based on worker density. Like for us, that would be uh, where the light center is, where CGI is. There's a ton of workers right there that are all in the right age group, and that way we think would be good. And uh, by engaging with some corporate partners, and I'm out of time. So it was fun. It was interesting. Uh, we've never done anything like this, and uh, we've never even worked together as a team. So there were we we had to get over the team dynamics, and then. You know, kind of uh, negotiate our way through all the uh, development pieces. But it was fun. It was good what do you learn by doing this? Uh, how to bring everybody's view into place, and um, how to take a, and a tremendous amount of information and uh, sort through it very quickly, and figure out, uh, you know, trying to come up with a solution for any particular problem. It's been a wonderful experience. Lots of hospitality. Lots of wonderful, innovative ideas that I've been hearing. Uh, really enjoy the city of Lafayette. I have family here, so it's always good to be able to come back in and help, you know, kind of give back to the community in the form of coming up with some solutions, perhaps, that can be uh, benefit the Lafayette community in transportation and traffic. What did you learn by doing this? I learned that I work with some really great people, people I just met the other day, and from 24 hours of being right next to each other, elbow to elbow, wonderful people, very quick learners, and we all were able to contribute to this idea and feel really good about it. Oh, it was incredible. We worked with uh, my team. We had a total of five people. We worked till I think 3 a.m. and then we tried to take a break to get a little bit of rest, started at 7 a.m. again. So it was pretty intense, but it was uh, really exciting. It was fun presenting to uh, the judges. It was a great event. Catapult was delighted to be here. We got in around, I personally got in Thursday morning. We worked a good 12 hours each day. Uh, we went through a lot of data that was provided and ultimately uh, overlaid a number of metrics, including jobs per acre, walkability, and crime. Oh, it was a great experience. We enjoyed it. It was uh, great to work together to solve the uh, transportation issue here in Lafayette, leveraging its first class uh, infrastructure here. What did you learn by doing this? We learned a lot about Lafayette, its infrastructure, and also the problems and opportunities there are to uh, easily connect emerging technologies to existing infrastructure. Events like this are cost effective for municipalities like Lafayette because you bring in a lot of brain power and it doesn't cost a lot to do it. We're all here on our own dime. 
we come up with spontaneous ideas, and then because they get to pick from multiple teams presenting, they can pick and choose multiple ideas from multiple teams and get the best of all worlds. The winner of the $10,000 and the LUS Fiber Smart City Challenge 2018 is 360 Fuel. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. We were ecstatic. We uh, are very uh, happy with the uh, the results and uh, pleased with uh, with winning. So, what was your solution to relieve the traffic bottleneck? Uh, our solution was a mixture of sensor as well as uh, mobile technology, uh, along with the existing infrastructure that's already in place, the fiber infrastructure with all the traffic lights throughout Lafayette. What do you think of this entire contest? Oh, it was great. Uh, 24 hours to come up with a solution in code is uh, a very short amount of time to uh, produce the results that we did, so we're very pleased. It has been so heartwarming to see people locally and out of town who have come here excited about what we can do with this technology here as well as what the city of Lafayette as a cultural and an innovative center can do for uh, for the future and uh, it's been the, the, the people I've spoken to here the ones that participated in have enjoyed themselves here they've enjoyed the nice mix of having both the cultural element as well as being part of this really important competition well, anytime you talk about smart city challenges the, the most important thing is you can talk about internet of things and augmented reality and artificial intelligence and all of these buzz phrases but what it really means is traffic lights that can sense when there's backups in real time and remove the human element and they adjust all automatically and smart street lights to save on efficiency both inside the buildings on the streets uh, and all those different types of technologies that that exist out there you just have to figure out how to best implement them within your city to take advantage of it this is exciting so this is really exciting to see uh, these people coming together uh, forming teams and coming up with creative solutions uh, for the city um, really to brainstorm it's an opportunity for them to come together and brainstorm um, you know get right brain thinking about how cities can be different and deliver services differently I'm just so excited about what we heard um, some of these folks you know with very little training very little background came in and pitched some really innovative solutions and we're just excited excited about you know what can happen when a bunch of really smart people get together and think about the future of our community. Lafayette is this really unique place we, we have this incredible culture this Cajun culture French speaking uh, part of our community and and again we have the technology that 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 really it differentiates us from, from most places in America. And so when you combine all those things together and we utilize technology in really smart ways, then it starts to attract companies, it starts to attract people and businesses want to locate here and it, it becomes an economic engine that, uh, that you know, most cities would die for and we're, we're working towards that ourselves. The nation is looking to Lafayette as it has, it's one of the few cities has its own public utility and fiber infrastructure providing services to every citizen within the city. One of our premier products is that we offer a gig per second uh, internet service to homes at as low as six to nine dollars a month. That is very, very attractive. In fact, we're the only entity that can provide gig per second service in the city of Lafayette. And by the time people see this, you know, we, we'll be ready to start offering 10 gigs. So we're going to go 10 times what we have. And the beauty of that is that the technology of fiber is not limited by... Uh, by a lot of things. It, may, it, it gives you a, an opportunity that when you want to build on top of what you have, for example, going from one gig to 10 gigs is about, you know, about $3 million to get that done compared to $100 million cost to build a system as a whole. So once you have fiber in place, now you have that open pipe that can allow you to do whatever it is that's necessary in the future to be able to meet the demands and the growing demands of uh, internet usage. You know that there's smart people out there and you're, you're always thrilled when they're willing to engage in, in ways to, to help you with solutions, but, um, but I'm never really prepared for how brilliant all these young minds are and the solutions that come out of it. So we're thrilled uh, with the winning solution. We're, th we're thrilled with everybody because all of the input that we're receiving is going to help us be a better city. If people have questions like more information, what should they do? Go to smartcity at lus.com.